Spring melted into summer in a wash of rain with little to tell the seasons apart save for the landscape and its blooms and foliage at its start. Rain eventually gave away to the sun which brought with it the temporary heat of long summer days. Well, about five of them. And now, in a wisp of time, the dusty, weedy paths are braced for the autumn. The best season. The joy of living in England is we do the seasons well sometimes managing all four seasons in one day. I am a person who does not take change on the chin. I'm a odd sort of creature who fares much better with certainty, predictability and routine, which is why it surprises me so that I adore the anticipation of a new season. Oh my gosh. Foxglove heaven. So much so that I can run ahead and prematurely dive into the joys of fall living before summer has had its fill or Christmas before oh. the last firework has erupted. I need to get there. Oh my gosh. It's like... If I was whimsical, I'd be like, that's fairies. Fox gloves. And with the changing seasons, I always put pressure on myself to really do something with it. Be it a craft, a cooking project, learning something new, documenting the doing of something all the time, which puts my inner being into a continuous rumination, which fatigues my mind and it can bring everything to a halt. Everything stands stock still, save for my brain, which is at full throttle. fact is, it's hard for me to just be, to do nothing. I never seem to ever learn the lesson that some days are meant for simply breathing and not much else. Not every day needs to be the day that I save the world. My mother had a saying, in a hurry to be the first in line at the mortuary. You'll have to imagine that being said in a thick Washingtonian accent, very grumpily, that never really left her despite living in the Buckinghamshire Hills for 25 years or more. Honestly, she used the expression for anyone travelling at more than 30 miles an hour through the village, but for me it stuck and it rang true as it does still, as a very important life lesson. Why the rush? What is really so pressing and so important that I would allow my precious years to be tainted with continuous rumination over not doing or being enough? Even after I took a step back from my career. What is life actually for? And where are we all trying to get so quickly? 
I think spending time in nature, truly observing the budding flowers, the bees and the critters, you can see in action that nature will not be rushed. It will not move for anyone, any place or anything. Every season has its own jobs and its own expectations. And those seasons, especially spring and summer, are indeed very busy. Oh, they're massive, those ones. That's a hill and a half. Jurassic Park leaves. Look at that. Huge. For nature, there are jobs to be done and missions to accomplish. But what is amazing about nature is there are boundaries. Nature doesn't just pile it on. It doesn't expect for it to do more than what is required. And therefore, it does its job most beautifully. Imagine if nature treated itself as we do. It would almost be glorious, wouldn't it? The elder tree isn't expected to both bloom its flowers and produce its berries at the same time. It takes one thing at a time, and because it must take its time, it does things well and it can produce without burnout. It's not living well or actually being productive and progressive in any way if one is forcing the impossible task to do and be everything, sowing and harvesting all at once. So why is the world, why is it all so insistent and urgent if the very planet we live on will not comply with that idea? Just like we can feel as humans when we know that we're doing way too much, there's a sort of short-term glory in getting everything done, but nothing can bloom forever. Nothing can be in a continual state of birth or be able to sustain that pace. So as fast as it all came up, it would die, and then it would be barren. The soil would be depleted, the pollinators would be exhausted and not able to draw any further nourishment. It would all be burnt out. The landscape would have nothing more to give. And how is this any different from how many of us live our lives, me especially? You're not going out. Not at 
find a wee little lizard. Rest assured, it's not our fault. It's not mine, not yours. That's it. Yay, thank you. Welcome. There are huge consequences for refusing to live life at this pace any longer. My bank account will tell you all you need to know about that. I have all but run out of my savings, but I have a refusal to comply with stricken living any further. It's just not worth it to me. God, it is really coming down out there. I really am enormously failing at this slow living stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's not the first time I've come on here and moaned about that, is it? It's my brain. There's a saying that you can fake it until you make it. So I'm doing that. And hopefully with practice, I can at least feign that I am slowing down enough to smell the roses <laughs> with a quiet brain. I do deliberately take on activities like harvesting berries or making my own bread and butter, cooking from scratch, taking time to explore creative pursuits like learning about storytelling and filmmaking. But it's my brain that tells me that I shouldn't be paying attention to pursuits that may not pay off in any form of monetary or professional value. It is a load of bollocks, isn't it? So here is me with my pessimistic brain, showing up and making a video, sharing my thoughts with the huge risk that it'll all be a big waste of time and nobody will see it and it all might not be worth it, but I'm doing it simply because I want to. I want to make videos. If you have watched this video all the way through, then I like you a lot and we should probably hang out. Mm. I'd like to know, do you have a busy brain too? And uh, if so, what do you do to slow it down? Please share with me. I want to know how other people direct their brains away from continual rumination. Um, maybe you will, in fact, have the conclusion to this video, which I guess is all about rumination. I don't know, for what it's worth. This is really nice. I'm quite proud of myself for making it, actually. So I am, um, um, I have, already written it up and I've put it in the description box below so if you'd like to make this recipe yourself then you can get the link to the full recipe. Can you hear the thunder that is outside? That's crazy! And so I'll bid you adieu, you take care and hopefully see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>